Rajan Lee, The Care and Feeding of the Mind Directed thought and evaluation, i.e. adjusting the breath so that it's comfortable, are like polishing a mirror until it's clean and bright so that we can see our reflection sharp and clear. When we adjust the breath, we're adjusting the mind. When we adjust the mind, it's like dressing the body. And when we dress the body, we're dressing our reflection. If our body is beautiful, its reflection will have to be beautiful too. Or you could say that it's like looking at different types of mirrors, which will transform our reflection in different ways. Say you look into a convex mirror, your reflection will be taller than you are. If you look into a concave mirror, your reflection will be abnormally short. But if you look into a mirror that's flat, smooth, and normal, it will give you a true reflection of yourself. In the same way, adjusting the breath to put it in good order is tantamount to putting the mind in good order as well, and can give all kinds of benefits, like an intelligent cook who knows how to prepare food so that its taste is new and nourishing in a way that appeals to her employer. Sometimes she changes the color, sometimes the flavor, sometimes the shape. She doesn't simply keep fixing things the way she always has, all year round or all her life, i.e. porridge today, porridge tomorrow, porridge the next day, to the point where her employer has to go looking for a new cook. An intelligent cook who knows how to vary her offerings so that her employer is always satisfied and doesn't grow tired of her cooking is sure to get a raise in her salary or maybe a special bonus. In the same way, if you know how to adjust and vary the breath, if you're always thinking about and evaluating the various breaths in the body, you'll become thoroughly mindful and expert in all matters dealing with the breath and the other properties of the body. You'll always know how things are going with the body. Rapture, ease, and singleness will come on their own. The body will be full, the mind will be full, the body at ease and the mind at peace. All the properties will be at peace, free from unrest and disturbances. It's like knowing how to look after a small child. If your child starts crying, you know when to give it milk or candy, when to give it a bath, when to take it out for some air, when to rock it in a cradle, when to give it a toy or a doll to play with. The child will stop crying, stop whining, and leave you free to finish whatever your work is. The mind is like a small, innocent child. If you're skilled at looking after it, it'll be obedient, happy, and contented, and will grow day by day. When the body and mind are full and content, they won't feel hungry. They won't have to go opening up the pots and pans on the stove or pace around looking at the windows and doors. They can sleep in peace without any disturbances. Ghosts and demons, the pains of the khandas, won't come and possess them. This way we can be at our ease, because when we sit, we sit with people. When we lie down, we lie down with people. When we eat, we eat with people. When people live with people, there's no problem. But when they live with ghosts and demons, they're sure to squabble and never find any peace. If we don't know how to evaluate and adjust our breathing, there's no way our practice of concentration will give any results. Even if we sit till we die, we won't gain any knowledge or understanding at all. There was once an old monk, seventy years old, thirty years in the monkhood, who had heard good things about how I teach meditation and so came to study with me. The first thing he asked was, what method do you teach? Breath meditation, I told him, you know, buto, buto. As soon as he heard that, he said, I've been practicing that method ever since the time of Ajahn Mun, Bhutto, Bhutto, ever since I was young, and I've never seen anything good come of it. All it does is Bhutto, Bhutto, without getting anywhere at all. Now you're going to teach me to Bhutto some more? What for? You want me to Bhutto till I die? This is what happens when people have no sense of how to adjust and evaluate their breathing. They'll never find what they're looking for, which is why adjusting and spreading the breath is a very important part of doing breath meditation. Getting to know yourself, becoming acquainted with your body, your mind, the properties of earth, water, fire, wind, space, and consciousness, knowing what they come from, how they arise, how they disband, how they're in constant stressful not-self, all of this you have to find out by trying to explore on your own. Only then will your knowledge be of real use. If your knowledge simply follows what's in books or what other people tell you, it's knowledge that comes from labels and concepts, not from your own discernment. It's not really knowledge. Knowing only what other people tell you is like following them down a road. And what could be good about that? They might lead you down the wrong road. And if the road is dusty, they might kick dust into your ears and eyes. So in your practice of the Dhamma, don't simply believe what other people say. Don't believe labels. Practice concentration until you gain knowledge on your own. Only then will it count as discernment. Only then will it be safe.